Okay, so let's jump onto Michael's computer. Nice, you get an alien at a crash landing here with some particle effects. I like it. Okay, so by default, Unity already has a camera in the scene. And let's get out of play mode. There we go. And I'm just going to quickly arrange Michael's interface the way I like it because I have trouble working otherwise. Let's move these over. I changed this project pane to a one column layout so I can see everything easier. Collapse all of his m folders he has open. Okay. Um, this would be a good time to kind of clean up your hierarchy. Michael, you got a ton of stuff in here. So for instance, like all these trees, you could put those inside of a, a group. And to do that, <clears throat> just uh, choose Create Empty. And we could call that like trees. And this isn't necessary. It just makes it easier to see what you're doing in the hierarchy if things are collapsed down. There's a couple more trees. Drag those into the tree group. OK. So now we can actually see a little bit of space in our hierarchy that helps. And there's camera. So it looks like that is the view that we're seeing in the game view. Good. OK. So with the camera selected, what we're going to do is create a timeline for it. So let's go and open up the window menu. And sorry, you're on. 2017.1 version of Unity, which has it under actually, I don't even know if yours has timeline by default. That's scary. Let's go look at your package manager. Oh, there's timeline editor. Okay. In the newer version, they put it under sequencing or something like that. So timeline editor. And this opens up the timeline. I'm just going to drag it down here so we can still see the scene. OK? So with the timeline open, it says, to start creating a timeline, select a game object. So I'm going to select the camera. And then it says, or then it pops open a create button at the bottom. So I'll hit create. Pops open the window here. It lets us name it. And camera timeline is exactly what I want to call it. And it's going to save it right into our assets folder. That's fine. Cool. So now we can see it generated in our assets folder this little camera timeline. Okay. So that's the asset that contains the timeline for that object. All right. So we've got an animation track on there already. And that's exactly what we want. We want to animate the camera object itself. Yes. So maybe we'll just have it move back slightly and pan or move towards that alien character. So there's, there's a million things you could do with the camera in animating it. But I'm just going to create just maybe a very slow zoom out or moving backwards. So with the camera object selected, make sure we can see it in the scene view. Uh, get your move tool, because that's what we're going to be doing is moving the camera. Let's go ahead and just pull it really close to that alien. And you can see the camera preview over here. Um, but for an even better preview, let's go to the game view and just pull that down over here in the bottom right. Maybe I'll do the upper right just so that Everyone else can see this a little better up here. And I'm going to change 
the aspect ratio of the game view to 16 by 9. That's the same aspect ratio as HD video, and that's usually what you want. Okay, so now I'll just continue modifying the camera to get it kind of pointing in the direction I want, maybe uh, move it slightly down so we're kind of looking up a little more. And again, this is all uh, your creative input. So Michael may want to do this completely different after he sees how to do it. All right, so this is our starting point. This is where the animation is going to start. And I imagine that alien is going to do something, right, Michael? Does he, does he move really fast out of the way, or is it just a small movement? OK, perfect. And so now I'm going to go ahead and hit this little record button in the timeline. See that? That little red button. And as soon as you turn that on, it's, it's like it's activated. So it's now listening for us to make movements. And so I'll just kind of move the camera a little bit there, make sure it's got a keyframe set. And you notice as soon as I move the camera, it actually recorded a keyframe right there at the beginning, which is what we want. This is the, the first point, the beginning of the animation, right? So now we're going to go further in time. Let's just say, do you know how many frames your animation is? How about seconds? You know how long it is? Approximately five seconds. Well, we'll make it a little longer. Let's go like uh, eight and a half seconds, OK? And now all we have to do in our scene view is pull the camera back slightly back to where we want it. And maybe even move it over a little bit. We'll move it over just slightly this way so we get kind of better look at the wreckage. Um, and maybe we'll tilt down slightly, rotate down a little bit, just something like that. And it's recorded all those changes I just made at that point in time. So now I can go ahead and disarm or deactivate the recording, the little red button, and we have ourselves a nice camera animation ready to go. Cool, huh? That's it. So you can animate anything in Unity just by giving it a timeline, uh, make sure it has an animation clip, and then activating the recording and make a movement. Does that make sense, Michael? Excellent. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and show you something else cool. Um, if we have the package manager in here, which I don't think we do. Well, I'll show you a different way. So in the asset store, there is a package, which I think is still on here. Yeah, there it is. So this is called the post-processing stack. And it's free, and it's made by Unity. And this is a way to really give your, your scene a cool look, OK? Um, you can dramatically change it with different lighting. And it really kind of just makes, makes your scene look a lot more cinematic. So I'll go ahead and download that. And of course, if you don't like the way this looks, Michael, you can just turn it off. It's not a big deal. But I'll go ahead and hit import on that. So th you can think about these as filters that you're placing on the camera to make your scene look different. So as soon as that imports in, I'm going to select the camera and try to add something on there. There we go. Now, you may be scared because the game empty. You just went view uh, empty. That's OK. And the reason it did that is it actually probably made a new camera. Mr. Brooks here? Hey there, can you send me Joseph Flores for an early Sure. Thank you, Joey Flores. Time to leave early.
All right, so on your camera, we can now try to add some post-processing. I'm a little rusty on this procedure because it's totally different than the new version of Unity. Let's see here. Yeah, it's just a component. So we want to go ahead and add that here. Okay, so post-processing behavior script, and uh, we have to make a new post-processing profile to put on it, unless there's one in here already. Okay, so we should be able to create one in here. There it is, post-processing profile. All right, so let's name that uh, Michael. Why can I not rename that? Well, it doesn't matter what the name is. Let's just go on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move the game view over here. And now we should be able to just adjust these. Oh, first we got to connect our post processing profile onto the camera. Now we can select it and adjust it. So let's start off with uh, <clears throat> a vignette, which will give it kind of a dark edge. See that? Crank up the intensity, you can really see that. So almost everything looks better with a little bit of darkness on the edges. And this is just kind of one particular look I'm going to bring you through, but you can experiment with adding these other things. So let's add some ambient occlusion. Check out what that does. See that? Kind of add some nice lighting shadows to your scene. Uh, Anti-aliasing is always good. Look at what that does to the trees in the background. See that? Michael? Better, right? Less pixelated, yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't think we'll need screen space reflection. Yeah, because you, you don't have any materials that are reflective here. Depth of field is something that gives a nice cinematic feel. And what you want to do is change the focal length. See that? So what's cool about this is you could, uh, let's make that large. Yeah, it's, it's making certain depth of your scene blurred out, which can give a really cool effect. Um, let's increase focal length. Yeah, way back there, and then oh, the distance. There, you can see that now. So we could go like just on him. We got that too small. Let's make that. Yeah. So again, this is something you want to just play with. Like maybe you want to just have the trees blurred out, but not, not the crash site.
There we go. See, this is starting to look kind of cool. You've also got motion blur. Um, probably don't need to mess with that. Bloom is the one that I use for almost everything. So if we crank up the intensity of this, you can really see what's happening. Yeah. So especially if you have metal materials or anything really reflective, um, gives this nice kind of glow around edges. And there's a lot of adjustment you can do that as well. It's kind of cool. So maybe just a little bit. Also, if you're using emissive materials, which are materials that actually put off light, it's a great way to make things look like they're glowing. Bloom. Okay, um, I usually like to let, add a little bit of chromatic aberration, which I'm going to just crank up the intensity so you can see what it does. See that? It's basically from the edges, just like the vignette, but it's kind of taking the image and breaking into three different colors. So if you look towards the edge, things kind of look like they have prisms on them or rainbow a little bit. It just gives kind of a cool depth to the scene. You've also got grain, which kind of just makes it noisy. See that? Yeah. Or like old film kind of has that grain. And it can, you know, add quite a bit of realism, but I usually don't like to add it just because it makes things noisy. I like it to be clean. But that looks much better already. And if you want to see kind of what it looks like without that, we can just go back to our camera over here. And you can just uncheck that script. See, so before and after. You like it, Michael? Cool. And that's on our camera animation now, so here's what you got. The camera animation. Let's see what it looks like played. Say so play. And that should play our camera animation along with him doing his thing. Here we go. Nice. So your animation is actually quite a bit longer than 8 seconds. Probably more like 10 to 15 seconds. I like it though. So again, you may want to adjust all the things I did. And remember, Michael, to adjust those things you have to go and select the, the post-processing profile that we created. And what's cool about this, uh, Michael, is that this is sort of like a template file. You could use this in your future Unity projects just by dragging it into that script that's on the camera, right? Looks good, man. <laughs>